know, in modern industrial automation, the assumption is, is that everything is moving to the cloud. Information is gathered, it's often aggregated on your shop floor, but you've got to push it up to the cloud where then something happens to it. We hope it's secure, but we assume that we need cloud apps to make sense of the data collected in manufacturing to really control it. I'm with Mike Chen, he's director of the Automation Center Americas for Omron. Mike, do we have to go to the cloud to operate a modern production operation? Not anymore. Really the whole idea of industrial automation being OT technology and OT having that, that friction against IT, that, that, that needs to be dispersed, right? That type of idea is going away with the, the bridge of technology where you are having machine learning algorithms embedded into uh, industrial controllers that do not require any amount of cloud connectivity, any amount of fog level computing, and having all that data being uh, gathered, uh, analyzed, and utilized completely on the edge. And that's what we're showing here today. But Mike, cloud is the new way. It's new technology. It's the modern way of doing this. In here. I'm not saying that you can't use cloud. There all these types of industrial automation products do have the capability of connecting up, but the types of operations that we're talking about is real-time production. Real-time production data that is sometimes the lifeblood of our customers where they do not want that ever leaving their facility or if the data is just moving too fast. They're, they're in high-speed um, high production and they uh, cannot afford the latency time to go all the way up to the cloud and come all the way back. That's where we're really seeing operations technology and controller technology technology utilize that, uh, that machine learning algorithms. Now Mike, we talk about cloud, everyone talks about security as being the number one concern, but you brought something which is really talk, which is latency. It does take time to get something to a satellite, get it down to another location, then get it back to the shop floor. Right, not even just satellites, but just even your local uh, internet provider or your local IT department. If you are using uh, cloud level or fog level type of analytics, you do have to wait for that signal to, by physics, go all the way out and all, come all the way back. Uh, and for aggregate data, like you just said, uh, that is a viable option, but for production level data, if you're trying to do predictive, preventative maintenance type of procedures where several seconds could be the difference between lots of products strewn all over the floor, then that, that speed is not enough. Well, that begs the question about real-time control. Because in a high-speed process, of course, we are talking about a world where real-time control still has to be local. And you're aggregating data which is near real-time, but not completely real-time. That's right. Uh, real-time is always relative. For, um, let's say, for traditional commercial IoT type of applications, when you talk about uh, Nest thermos smart thermostats or things that you can control by your cell phone, several seconds is completely fine. But when you're talking about production-level equipment that is running at production rates, uh, you, you can't afford for that time. Real time can be nanoseconds, real time can be milliseconds, real time in our case can be inspection of data frames in 10 millisecond increments. Now, many production processes are highly sequential. Downtime anywhere is downtime everywhere at this point. Uh, reliability, the edge cases you're talking about using cloud only when you absolutely need to, is this the way to reliability? So uh, we're not saying this is the only way, we're saying that this is our way that we've doubled down on. The customer base that we've seen in the Americas and around the world really still is, uh, is wary of, using all, of putting all their production data into a, a, a remote cloud service. So for our products, whether it be the AI controller itself or the condition monitors or the motion type of products that we have and robots, we've found ways to give people the ability to predictively maintain their products and really uh, prolong the life of their production lines without having to rely on cloud services. If they want to go to cloud services, they can with our products, but it is not required for that level of uh, improvement. Cloud if you like, but not necessarily cloud, says Mike Chen of Omron.